And so folks like me or Spencer or many of my other fabulous colleagues, women, doesn't matter what gender, ethnicity, race, they can't be themselves. And when the student knows you're not yourself, then they don't heal. And so the statistic is, and the research is, it doesn't matter what type of therapy modality you use, cognitive behavior, you know, act, you know, solutions focused. The number one most important thing for outcomes is connection. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that the education is based on connection and the therapy room is based on connection, which increases outcomes, then like, why aren't we teaching this more? Why aren't we pushing this more? Because we're talking about maybe this was mentioned like in one of my classes. Um, Someone like me latches onto that because then it, I'm not anxious now about how to memorize all these damn things. I know just to be real and authentic and we're going to have some good outcomes. I need to know the, you know, the material so that way therapeutically I can create the right intervention. And so that's what I was thinking when I was listening to you two and, and then looking at Spence. Because this is why people affirm us on the podcast because this is very authentic, very real. Um, yes, yes, yes. And that's what we're driving for. And it sounds like that's what the Kevin Love Fund is about is authenticity to be your vulnerable and real self. But you're not telling the teachers to go and be like, well, you know, so I hate my husband, you know. Right. If if you like had a bird's eye view into our trainings, those are the things we're talking about. We're saying, right. look, especially psychologists and um, school counselors and social workers sometimes are say, are saying to us, we're taught not to do this. We're taught not to disclose any personal information. And we, we say like, well, we disagree with that. So you're, you're not just like, like Ellie says, a puddle on the floor, mm -hmm. but you need, it's age appropriate and intentional sharing. That's kind of the key. You're talking about something that happened in your life in an intentional way. Meaning if you know, your kids are struggling with anxiety, you can talk about the anxiety you felt in your life. You know, you, you're doing it intentionally and age appropriate. It, you're not going to like what we sometimes share in our creative activities with other adults in a training is not what we're going to share with the sixth grade classroom. Nope. So, yes. So we kind of are. And I always say, I always say, like, bring something into the classroom that you've already processed in a different setting. So, like, if you're going, if let's say you've gone through an experience of loss. Um, I would not have the first time that you're kind of like sh sharing those feelings with someone. I would not have your students be the first no, one that you go to. that's so right? toxic. Like that, yeah, that we're very clear with teachers about that. So you're processing this in another setting, maybe with a friend or if yep. you have a therapist, and then you're able to kind of bring it into the classroom and share it with students. But this, the students are not, you know, helping you kind of work through it. They get to be, but the thing about the research that I do think is really cool is that when students are entrusted to be a witness to their teacher, they do really appreciate that opportunity and they rise to the occasion. They're able to do it. Mm -hmm. And it feels wonderful for them to feel like, oh, my teacher really trusts me with something important to them. Um, but you can tell if the teacher is, come, is like coming to the student and this is their first time like working it out. So we're very clear about that. And in order to get to get access to the training, we require them to do a one hour, I mean, to get access to the curriculum, excuse me, they have to do a one hour virtual training with us where we just yeah. kind of explain how can you bring your story into your classroom in a way that um, you know, is really thoughtful and intentional. Um, so I'm, I am glad we're talking about this because I could hear someone hearing that and thinking like, well, I'm just going to go into my classroom tomorrow and be a puddle on the floor. And we really help, um, we really help teachers think about that. I can hear the pushback as being, this, this is, this is not my voice. This is the voice of other mm -hmm. mean individuals is this is soft. You're teaching kids this, this stuff. Soft. soft. This is soft. You're teaching yeah. kids, you know, your role. You teach them mathematics and, and writing. This is what you do. And the other pushback is going to be, well, now you got teachers being too vulnerable and they're taken away from the curriculum. They're putting it more on themselves. And then I know other pushback is now I got to be nice to these kids or like empathetic with these kids or like, and care about the social emotional stuff when I already got to teach them and like handle the parents and I got my own stuff. So what you're asking is a big ask, but technically it heals everyone just by being a little bit more real, authentic, kind and listening. Um, we're not asking people as therapists, because this is the difference. You'll have people that will say the therapist literally made the session about themselves the whole time. Like right, they're in there right. processing their own issues. No, 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 no. So when I give my big boy speeches to my students, which I just did, you know, Spence has seen some of them, right? I'm going to cry in them maybe once or twice. 
you know, the, the one this past weekend with uh, all these let, wonderful Latinx students. And we're talking about education, moving forward, anxiety, stress. And I get choked up and I cry because my best friend's kid, you know, Spencer knows this. We thought that his baby had cancer and she had a little trigger warning. I'm sorry, I'm too late on that oh, one. Geez. But she had this lump on her head and it was terrifying. And then the, the, the insurance through TRICARE, the military is terrible. It was like three, four months before we figured out it wasn't like dangerous. And oh, God. we're all neurodivergent, yeah. and autistic. We're all over, overwhelmed. My father, it was, it was horrific. Even Spencer was like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I cry in that moment, right? I can feel it right now, but I'm more grounded right now. And with the students, I was like in the story. And they yeah. see that. Yeah. And they see a big boy crying. I'm talking about this because you're going to hit emotions. You as students should be able to know it's okay to express emotions and have love and family and connection. And so I process it with them. And then we start sharing their stories because as we know, people of color, our cultures, our ethnicities, our races grew through storytelling. It's all about storytelling. We didn't handle books. It's all storytelling. And so this is how we relate to folks. So this is why I really, really love when Ellie and you start talking about this. The first meeting is through storytelling, mm -hmm. which is everything they told me I was actually doing bad in, in college when I was in my master's program. Then I get into my internship, my second one. And she goes, you're the best intern I've ever had. The students love you. This is amazing. Your outcomes are better than anyone. Now I do these speeches at Purdue University and across like everywhere else in the United States. They're like, you're magnificent. They tell me and Spencer, we're magnificent. What's the difference between me and them? Right. The difference is that we foster connection, kindness, love, humor, authenticity. This is why we wanted to sit down with the Kevin Love team. And it just happened that Spence... Kept poking y'all to talk and to like to hit us up on Instagram. And then we watched that Spider-Man thing. So I know Spence, you got more questions, but I yeah. do want to eventually get to the Spider-Man thing before we get out. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. And I'll go towards the next question I actually have for both of you. It's since you both are directors of education, would love to know what is the future of the Kevin Love Fund? What does it look like to you both? Maybe it's the same, maybe it's different. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would love to know, like, what do you think is the future for the Kevin Love Fund? Global domination. You, Sally? you go, you share your future and then I'll, I'll share mine. I mine, better be like, mine well, mine is actually like, I want to call back something that Dr. Naz was saying. Is it Naz or Naz? Naz. 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 New Yorkers from the A's come out funny. Okay, Naz. Um, I... You know, you said that you could hear in your mind the pushback that some teachers would give. Yeah. One of the other pushbacks that we hear or concerns that we hear is where I feel like that I like seeing the future go, which is sometimes teachers are scared not to have the kids lose respect for them if they hear them share a story or like over um, feel they're just friends and not, you know, not listen to them. Yeah. But they're worried that if a student shares a vulnerable story, what are they going to do with it? If the student gets overwhelmed, what are they going to do once this um, story is in the classroom? Thanks. Is that going to um, cause something that they, they can't contain or control? And so we've really put effort into the way we've written these lessons and the way we train to explain, like, it might feel risky. Even as a parent of two teenage girls, I remember worrying about people talking about certain things because I thought oh, my kids, I don't think know about that yet. And I don't want them to learn about this, you know, whether it was like self-harm or something. And then of course my children, my daughters knew about it. And I would stop one daughter from watching a TV show, but she was just seeing the edits on TikTok, the exact scenes that I didn't want her to see. As a teacher, I was scared sometimes of bringing something into the classroom that maybe I would make something worse by talking about it. And so I think what we've learned in the years we've done this now, now we have over 75,000 kids getting this curriculum, is that the stories are already there. The risks are already there. Kids are really struggling. And us empowering teachers to begin, and counselors and coaches to begin this conversation just makes the days that students are in their school for eight hours feel a little bit safer, feel a little bit like there's a trusted adult I can go to when 
things get really rough for me. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I just want to, I'm very hesitant. I'm the most like cautious person on the team of like saying, we're going to reach a billion people or we're going to change the world. But I do want to change the world in that way. We're also in 15 different countries. So we're doing stuff in India with kids who have never really talked about social emotional learning and, um, and refuge, you know, like a recovery camps in the Ukraine where we're working with kids who have just been through the worst experiences of their lives and are still going through it. So that's my hope for the kind of future of the Kevin Love Fund is that we continue to help shift that um, dynamic in, in schools and in um, after school programs. And when, when young people are with trusted adults during the day who are responsible for their well-being. That was a long answer. No, that was magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you know, obviously I, sorry, I pivoted us away until the next question. And technically I laid a lot of stuff on you in the last one. About yeah. All I the had pushback. to like, I needed an answer that. You yeah. did good. You did, you did good. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I think that, you know, I mean, Sarah and I really, sh- we really share a big picture kind of dream. And I think that, um, you know, Sarah always says when we give our kind of like introduction to the curriculum, like there's so much mandatory learning, like students are still memorizing historical information that they could look up on the internet, which I mean, listen, I'm not saying that's not a good use of time, but it's like, if when you look at the CDC, like statistics on anxiety and depression among young people right now, it's like there, it, there is a real school for me. And I think we all feel like this at, at the Kevin Love Fund, like it's a real missed opportunity if we're not also giving them like a a true evidence-based toolkit. Like we already have the data on the things that make people feel good. We know what promotes well-being, what promotes connection, what creates belonging. Like we actually know what does it, but the way we spend that limited amount of time that kids are in school isn't always on those things that are going to produce that feeling. So I would love to be part, one of the groups that creates this change on a big scale in terms of what schools even are. And and then also bringing the curriculum into areas that don't have access to social emotional learning. I think it's really important to us to everything that we've created at the Kevin Love Fund is free. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Check out the full episode on our channel and anywhere you find podcasts. Also, remember to like and subscribe. Whoop whoop.